Yeah, it's a new place. You like it? I, I like it. Yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> I'll give it a couple more minutes. Is that right? Wait till they're all down. All right. First of all, good evening. Thank you all for being here. Today is a historical day. It marks the 100th day that the Republicans took the majority in the House and were sworn in. One thing that is abundantly clear is the People's House is a productive house again. The first thing we did was make sure members showed up for work, no longer staying home, that you came to work. We hit the ground running on delivering the commitment to America. And the numbers just speak for themselves. In the first 100 days of the 118th Congress, the House has introduced more than 3,000 pieces of legislation, has taken more than 182 roll call votes, and voted on more than 59 bills, 86% of them being bipartisan. Of the 36 bipartisan bills that have passed, Democrats have cast 4,705 yay votes on them. Here's just a few of them. It shows a great contrast to the difference to the last Congress to this. One, being much more productive. Two, showing up for work. Three, what the majority selected for their H.R. 1. The Democrats picked a bill of H.R. 1 to protect themselves to make it easier for them to reelect it. We picked H.R. 1, Lower Energy Cost Act. How could we help the American public lower the energy cost for them? Not only did we have four Democrats vote with us, but we continue to move that bill forward. We created the Select Committee on China to allow America to speak with one voice. We had more than 146 Democrats to join with us. And just last week, a number of Democrats joined us at the Reagan Library in meeting with the President of Taiwan. We blocked the sale of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to China. 113 Democrats joined with us. We passed legislation to nullify D.C.'s soft on crime criminal code. Even though the president at the beginning said he would veto it, he ended up signing it. We passed legislation to end the pandemic. 11 Democrats joined with us. Again, the president said he was opposed to it and ended up signing it into law. We denounced the horrors of socialism. We had 109 Democrats join us, but more than 100 who would not. We passed legislation that would protect senior retirement savings accounts. The President vetoed it. House Republicans are accomplishing a lot in a productive, bipartisan fashion. If you compare us to the last Congress, much more productivity here that passed the House than when the Democrats were in control. It becomes a new, effective House. But what's interesting, if you compare us to the Senate, they've had 100 days too. If you compare the number of bills that have been signed into law between the last Congress when the Democrats controlled the House, Senate, and the presidency, more bills have been signed into law in this Congress than the last, even though we have divided government. An interesting thing has happened as well. An effective House looks very different than a Senate that Schumer has become unproductive. Here are just the facts of Senator Schumer's Democrat Senate. Has passed only 10 substance bills in 100 days. That's less than one a week. Just think about that. As the House has passed a bill to fire 87,000 IRS agents, but Senator Schumer's Senate passed a non-binding resolution recognizing the importance of maple syrup production to Maine and designating March 26, 2023 as Maine's Maple Syrup Sunday. The House has passed the Parents' Bill of Rights. They give the parents a say in their kids' education. Senator Schumer hasn't taken up the bill yet, 
But the Senate did find the time to pass a non-binding resolution designating March 1st as a National System Technology Awareness Day. And it goes on and on. Where the House of Representatives, they become a House of Resolutions. Earlier today, I was in New York. And it's the beginning of a baseball season, one of our favorite times of years. If you're in New York and you're thinking baseball, you think the Yankees. And you think about the great Bambino, Babe Ruth. And Babe Ruth said, you can't beat the person who never gives up. If you think of anything about this new Congress, about this Republican majority, about my fight to become Speaker, the one thing I hope you all learn is that we will never give up on you and the American public. We will never give up on our commitment to America. In the coming days, we will vote on the protection of women and girls in Sports Act, just as we promised in the commitment to America. We think women and girls should only compete in women and girls sports. This will ensure a fair play. We'll vote on another measure from Andrew Clyde to block DC's radical anti-police proposal. And we will fight to bring fiscal sanity back to the House. Senator Schumer has not produced anything on a debt ceiling. He wants to put America into a challenge on whether we can move forward. The House will take a leadership position, and we will move to make the, the fiscal house of America more secure by passing a debt ceiling and sending it to Schumer. We know it may disrupt his ability to pass more resolutions, but we look forward to him bringing the bill up and passing it to make sure America is more secure. With that, let me turn it over to our leader, who is responsible for working with the committees to making this House more productive, making this committee more productive as they move forward, but more importantly, was the author of H.R. 1, Steve Scalise. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In just our first 100 days, this House Republican majority has been hard at work fighting for those families who have been left behind for far too long. We've seen the devastation that President Biden and Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer's agenda just these last two years have done to drive up inflation, to hurt families in their pocketbooks, driving up energy costs, making our nation less safe, less safe both here at home and abroad, with our border wide open. And they asked for a different direction. And when we ran last year, we promised the American people that they would get a different direction if they elected this Republican majority. We ran on a commitment to America, and the good news is, in our first 100 days, we have already been hard at work following through on those promises. Now think about the different pillars that we ran on. We ran on four different pillars. An economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's built on freedom, and a government that's accountable. Now, I think to most Americans, Joy, we've actually been following through on this. To people who like the old way that Washington has worked, including people in the White House, they're probably not happy that we've been pushing back on all of the reckless agenda that's hurt those families. But I think it's important to talk about some of the numbers, and the speaker touched on that. 59 bills that have been passed already compared to 37 in Speaker Pelosi's first two years under President Biden. The rule bills that have been signed into law by this Congress are 50 percent more than the rule bills signed into law in the first 100 days when Democrats had every piece of lever of Washington, House, Senate, and White House, and yet we've already got 50 percent more, including a bill to address crime in D.C., a bill that initially some people were calling a partisan exercise that ended up getting such overwhelming Republican and Democrat support that the president, who originally said he would oppose the bill, ended up signing into law. The good news is we have a few more bills to stand up for police officers and stand up for hard work and families, and the president said he would veto those bills too. So if you look at the president's track record, most of the bills that he signed into law are bills he originally said he would oppose. And so if he comes out against a bill, it means there's a pretty good chance he actually might end up signing it into law, and it's going to help families all across America. And so if you just hit these four pillars, an economy that's strong. Look at H.R. 1, the Lower Energy Costs Act, where we said for far too long President Biden's made our country dependent on foreign lands for our energy. And what has it done? 
It's emboldened cartels. It's emboldened countries like Russia and Iran. And it's jacked up energy costs for families. 40% higher energy costs when people go to fill their car up. 30% or more higher that they're paying for household electricity. House Republicans stood up and said, we're going to do something about that. And we actually had Democrats join in with us. It's time for Chuck Schumer in the Democrat Senate to take up H.R. 1 and stand up for families who are sick and tired of paying too much for their energy costs. Let's get that bill signed into law. You're going to see us roll out tomorrow the plan to address the nation's debt ceiling while at the same time addressing Washington's spending problem that got us into this mess where President Biden has maxed out the nation's credit card. He's done it by re reckless spending. And here we're going to be rolling out a plan to address that problem as well. So over and over again, you've seen President Biden joining with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to create problems for families. You've seen this Republican majority hard at work in just 100 days addressing every single item that we talked on uh, this week, in fact, we're going to start a border security package through the Judi Judiciary Committee to address this massive problem where millions of people have come across our border. And it's not only an American national security problem, but look at how many young people have died. Every single day in America, nearly 300 young people are dying because of dr drug overdoses from drugs like fentanyl because President Biden opened up the southern border. Why doesn't President Biden care about the 300 young people that will die today? and that will die again tomorrow. We're gonna to bring a bill to the floor to fix that problem too. I sure hope, finally, President Biden and Chuck Schumer and Democrats and the president will join with us and stand with those American people who are sick and tired of being left behind by Washington. You've got a House Republican majority that's proud to stand with those families who are struggling. Let's go do something about it and get this great country back on track. Now the man who's been helping us get the votes for that, our whip, Tom Emmer. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thanks uh, to all of the members of the Republican Conference. By electing a House Republican majority last, November's, uh, last November, Americans sent a message to Washington. It's time to put a check on Joe Biden and the Democrats' failed agenda. And that's exactly what we've done. In our first 100 days, House Republicans not only reopened the House, as our speaker talked about, the People's House, by the way, not Pelosi's House, the People's House, we passed a rules package to create a more transparent, member-driven legislative process. We defunded Biden's army of 87,000 IRS agents. We stopped the selling of strategic petroleum oil in our reserve to China. We created the Select Committee on China. We tackled inflation with the Rain in Act. We defended parents' rights with the, bill, with the Parents' Bill of Rights Act, and we lowered energy costs with our signature legislation, the Lower Energy Costs Act. Even Joe Biden and the Democrats cannot deny the need for our common sense policies. 88% of the bills that we've passed have been with bipartisan majorities, and the President has already signed two of them into law. House Republicans have come together as a team We've come together as a team to enact the agenda that Americans elected us to enact. And our offense has forced the rest of Washington to legislate along with us. But we've only just begun. So while we've accomplished a lot, there's still a lot of more work to do. Great first 100 days, but they're over. Now we're going to move on to the next, and we're going to continue to keep advancing a positive agenda for the American people. Uh, and as we press forward on the tough fights ahead, Americans can rest assured that Republicans in the House are going to kin continue winning on their behalf. And with that, speaking of winning, our great conference chair, Elise Stefanik. Thank you, Tom. Today marks 100 days of our House Republican majority. Our Republican conference is working tirelessly to deliver on our promises made to the American people in our commitment to an America an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's built upon freedom, and a government that's accountable to we the people. 
As the previous speakers mentioned, we reopened the people's house, put an end to the drawn out COVID crisis, and repealed Joe Biden's army of 87,000 IRS agents targeting hardworking families and small businesses. We passed my bill, the Rain and Inflation Act, with bipartisan support to provide a check on painful Biden inflation hurting hardworking families, small businesses, and farmers across this country. We passed the Parents' Bill of Rights, putting power back into the hands of parents. House Republicans, the Republican Party, is the party of parents. That is very clear. We also passed an energy package that lowers the cost of energy and supports unleashing American energy independence. As the whip said, House Republicans, this House majority is setting the legislative agenda and the policy pace, delivering results for the American people. Every member of this conference is laser focused on listening to the American people, keeping our promises, and delivering those results. Each week, as House Republican Conference Chair, when we update the media, we have highlighted newly elected members of the freshman class who delivered this new House Republican majority. And as we mark 100 days, I'm honored to introduce to you a few of our members who you have heard from that you will hear more from the rest of this session and in years to come, starting with the freshman class president from South Carolina, Russell Fry. For two years, Americans watched their country suffer blow after blow from this administration's disastrous policies. They felt it in their wallets. They saw it in their communities. For two years, Democrats in this administration didn't have to answer to anyone on their policies, their missteps, and their outright failures. For two years, Democrats failed to have any meaningful oversight on how to get this country back on track. Well, not anymore. In House Republicans' commitment to America, we promise to restore government that is truly accountable. Since day one, that's exactly what we've been doing. We're investigating Joe Biden's border blunders, his skyrocketing inflation, his out-of-control spending, his non-existent approach to a hostile China, his foreign policy failures, including a disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal, his blind eye to pandemic fraud and abuse, his reckless attack on American energy, and yes, the nexus between his family and a foreign Chinese energy company. And we're just getting started. Maybe that's why House Republicans set a modern day record of holding 42 hearings in a single day. Because Democrats and their policy failures, we have a lot to talk about. Americans deserve answers, but more importantly, Americans deserve a government that works for them and not against them. That's exactly what House Republicans are doing. Oversight is a key component to our system of checks and balances. And I'm proud to work with this conference in its first 100 days, and I look forward to serving it in this next Congress. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it to a, over to a rock star from the great state of Indiana, Aaron Houghton. Thank you. Uh, we've accomplished a lot under Republican House leadership in the first 100 days of the 118th Congress. One of those big things happened a few weeks ago on the House floor with the House passage of the Parents' Bill of Rights. This bill, H.R. 5, would secure the fundamental right of parents that should always be guaranteed. Five fundamental core principles. The right to know what's being taught in schools, including reading material. The right to be heard. The right to see the school budget and spending. The right to protect their child's privacy. And the right to be updated on any violent activity at school. This necessary bill also included an important amendment that I drafted. The amendment would help monitor their children's reading levels inside the classroom. By allowing parents the knowledge to know if their children are not reading at reading levels by the third grade, a critical year where students transition from learning to read to reading to learn. The Parents' Bill of Rights would give the power back to parents with respect to their children's education and allow parents to obtain critical information from school administrators, school boards, and teachers to make informed decisions about their children's education. After COVID, we heard parents asking anyone who would listen, please help us get more information. Please help us protect our children's privacy. And Republicans have stood up to do just that. I've been contending against the education industrial complex for many years. Parental rights are not terminated at the school door. If parents shouldn't be in charge of their education, then who should? 
Democrats want bureaucrats to be in charge. Republicans stand with parents. The bottom line, our parents have a fundamental right to know what's happening in the classroom, and that's what Republicans successfully voted to do. I look forward to continuing to put American parents and our kids first in the next 100 days and beyond. Thank you. And now I will turn it over to the gentleman from Texas, Wesley Hunt. Joe Biden and this administration has waged war on our energy industry. From day one, by shutting down the Keystone and XL pipeline, he showed a level of weakness that we have not seen in generations. Now, a couple of months ago, we had, we had Valentine's Day, and not only did I buy my wife flowers, but also filled our car up with gas and gave her some eggs. And she goes, God, you really do love me. <laughs> because that's how ridiculous things cost today. And what HR1 does is it works for you. We are here to work for the American people so you can live every single day just like it was before the Biden administration. But also this is a clear issue of national security. Why in God's name do we continue to empower Venezuela, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping? I can guarantee you they don't get up in the morning and they don't say to themselves, oh my God, how can I make the world a better place? That's what we do. And that's what we are absolutely fighting for every single day. We've had a very eventful first 100 days. It's been an honor to serve with these brave Americans that want to work for you, the American people, every single day. And don't forget that. Thank you so much. I look forward for the next 100 days. And God bless you. I will be followed by my esteemed colleague, Laurel Lee, from the great state, the great free state of Florida. Well, thank you, Congressman Hunt. It is great to be here today to celebrate 100 days of Republicans' leadership in Congress. Before I came to Congress, I was a prosecutor and a judge, and I know firsthand how important it is for criminal penalties to reflect the seriousness of an offense and to ensure the safety of our communities. Recently, we've seen violent crime rates skyrocketing, and law-abiding citizens are the victims, a result of Democrats' extreme policies that protect violent criminals instead of the American people. Now, as a member of Congress, I am so proud to join my Republican colleagues in fighting to keep our nation safe and to support criminal justice policies that work. In this first 100 days, We've passed legislation that will put a stop to Democrats' soft on crime policies that have been plaguing the streets of our nation's capital. Just today, the House Judiciary Committee conducted a field hearing in New York City to hold prosecutors accountable who don't enforce the laws and let violent criminals back out on the streets. House Republicans are also committed to securing our border. We're working to stop the deadly flow of fentanyl and to stop human trafficking. We know that if the United States fails to control our borders, the drug cartels will. We're here to protect the American people and stop the lawless policies of the Biden administration. Finally, we will continue to support the men and women in blue to protect the first responders who do so much to protect us. In our first 100 days, Republicans took action to fight for a nation that's safe, and we will continue working together to fight for a criminal justice system that works for all Americans. And it is my pleasure to invite my friend and colleague, Jen Kiggins of Virginia. Thank you so much. Well, it's just awesome to be here to be able to celebrate our first 100 days of Congress and so many accomplishments that my colleagues have talked about. But one that I'm especially proud of is our bill that ended the COVID-19 national emergency. You know, as a geriatric nurse practitioner, I saw so much suffering during the COVID-19 pandemic. I saw it from my patients. I saw it from their families. I saw it from healthcare providers and nurses. And I saw it especially from our older adults and our greatest generation who lived in nursing homes and assisted living facilities and the isolation that they experienced during that time. We saw our businesses close, we saw our schools close, and our kids stay home. 
We saw our churches close. But we saw and we, most importantly, we felt big government in our lives. So I am so thankful for American ingenuity and hard work that gave us vaccines and treatments and allowed us to return to some normalcy. The new Republican majority, we went a step further though, and we reopened the People's House, the US House of Representatives, and we also passed a bill that ended the national COVID emergency that I'm proud to say was signed into law by President Biden. We're slowly fulfilling our commitment to America one step at a time, and that commitment promises a future built on freedom and a government that's held accountable. Most importantly, we're demonstrating what Republican leadership looks like and how we are leading by example to get our country back on the right track. And it's my honor to turn it back over to our esteemed speaker, Kevin McCarthy. Well, as you see, it's one of the most productive Congresses in the first 100 days. The uniqueness, too, that we don't talk about is we open this house back up to the people's house so the people can be here and be a part of it. It's also the process. You know, for the first time in seven years, we actually had a complete open rule, something this house has not seen, where every member, regardless of your Republican or Democrat, can offer any amendment at all. We continue to open the house further, continue to follow through on the commitment to America. In the first 100 days, we're just getting started. I thank you for being here. I know they just called votes, so we'll get your questions later. Thank you and God bless.